So let's jump in, man. So what is topic number one tonight? I personally would like to continue our conversation on trauma victims. When, and I mean trauma victims, I'm not talking about coming from war, PTSD or whatever. I'm talking about like everyday life trauma victims. Okay, but it all actually, it all it still goes together. Mm. It's just you know, different extremes, I guess, or, or, or yeah, the situations are different, but the result is the same. It's all the same, but one is obvious and one is not. Right. Okay. So, so what do you mean? So trauma victim. And uh, what's the significance of talking about trauma victim? Trauma victim is so we can all look at the world as it's supposed to be. Um, I think I have the hardest time dealing with um, just the, the average person I meet on the street because they're constantly like almost subconsciously saying what's wrong what why are you so negative the world is is a good place if you have hope and you have a good outlook on the world it shouldn't have to be that negative all the while their whole life shows me nothing but negative okay yeah. okay so so they're saying be up op be optimistic but when you take a look at them from an objective perspective mm -hmm. you're not seeing the reason for this it's not adding up right okay all right um, what, do you, what do you do you, you, you I, I'm, I'm assuming you think the same kind of thing or at least um you know you talk a lot about trauma victims that's that's where i got my first realization when you kept calling it a trauma victim yeah um i think what it is is these people a lot many people now they think trauma being a trauma victim equals normal life like they everyone, everyone's traumatized. traumatized. Uh -huh. Yeah, because because everyone is traumatized, mm. you know, to a degree. And so I had I had this conversation with one of my nephews. Um, I just kind of we he and I became reunited. We act we're not even reunited. I never really knew him mm. uh, growing up, and he he reached out to me, and now we're getting to know each other, and there's a considerable you know age difference between us. And um, and I'm I'm telling him I'm like listen um, you know I'm your uncle I, I, I'm you know I'm not trying to be heavy but I I, I can see uh, places where you're a little bit rough rough around the edges and I'm here to challenge you mm. and I had to really like explain that I actually, I actually said that that phrase I'm here to challenge you. And the main thing I was trying to get across to him based on everything he's been, he was saying to me, and we were trying to go in kind of kind of deep um, about our past and why we ha haven't been, you know, family stuff. But um, the main thing I had to explain to him, I said, you, you understand that this life uh, or society, not this life, I'm gonna take that back. Okay. Society and this life are two, can be two completely different things, mm -hmm. but they overlap. But um. Society is is geared, is programmed, is made for the, the the purpose of what they're doing or your experience in it is to buck break you. And especially when we talk about melanin rich people, and especially when we talk about black uh, or melanin rich males, mm. and especially when those melanin rich males happen to be black. Yeah. You know, it goes up into, you know, it's kind of a pyramid effect. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for white supremacy, would it still be designed to bug break you? Okay. I, I would say the short answer is yes. Um, because again, you have to delve into what is the meaning of life? Bob Marley talks about it in the Redemption song, right? What yep. is the meaning of this? What, what are we really doing? Which is a question that few people, you know, uh, dare to tread upon. The but if you, if you ask me, like again, the, uh, because if you think about it, it's, it's a relatively short time you're in this body. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, you know, I want to, uh, I want to attain fame, or I want to attain, um, or I want to be a good uh, husband, or wife, or, or father. I think a lot of those things are pious, good, and I, I think that people should do it if that's in your heart. And I would pat you in the back. I was a social worker, so I think I got cut off when I was explaining trauma. Yes, and you were explaining uh, uh, your cousin, no, your nephew, yeah. and uh, 
than the the difference between people's everyday trauma, which to me is uh, not obvious. Uh, people people will say that. Well, huh? let, let, let me finish what I was going to say. It's like two more sentences I'll go about ahead. my nephew. Okay. And I said I was there to challenge him. Oh you yeah, know? there it is. Yeah. I said I was here. I was that. That's my role as his uncle. And um, and. The thing I realized that I had to explain to him, first of all, first and foremost, was the fact that society is based on, is the, the, the very nature of it is designed to buck break you. And then you asked me if it wasn't for white supremacy. Oh, yes, yes. Would that still be the case? And I, and that's the short answer is yes. And if you think about the meaning of life, if you think the meaning is, some people think it's riches, have, people have different um, opinions. And I think a lot of those things are true if you feel you're supposed to do those things. Mm. But the ceiling, like I said, Brother Panic uses this, is that the ceiling on this? Mm. And I would say no, you know what I'm saying? And um, and you know, ancient script scripture uh, also says that. And you are here to be challenged. Right, we're trying to perfect that coal into diamond. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're supposed to raise yourself, like the chakra system, no matter how you want to look at it. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you red in the red and you move up to, to the orange, that would be a success story. Right. So lifetime, of course, you want to, you know, for those of us who study a little bit deeper, you know you want to get to the heart. You know what I'm saying? But Aside from that, I, the challenge, that's what the, that's why you're constantly being challenged. That's why there's rich people who have everything that you want. When I say you, I'm talking about the people who might be watching, but they still commit suicide. You're like, why would they do that? Because they're being challenged in their own way. The challenge that's, that's tailor-made specifically for them. Just like your challenge is tailor-made specifically for you. Exactly. So at one point, it's, it's almost a scapegoat to blame it on white supremacy. But for the average person, you know what's crazy is uh, the, the average black person to me it, it really has trouble blaming it on white supremacy. And then the average so-called spiritual black person has trouble saying, yo, it's not all about white supremacy. Like who cares? You know what I'm saying? Because the level I'm at uh, white supremacy is almost a thing of the past now. The only thing is I have to keep discussing it because the, the layman, they haven't even gotten over that. That's why we keep bringing up coons and and uh, sellouts. Let me interrupt you real quick. I just want to make sure to make sure you what you mean, because for me, I don't think the blame is is white supremacy. It's the problem. The blame ultimately is going to be, have to be me or us or the the individual. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But the, but the, so the problem is white supremacy. Okay. We, you know what I'm saying? Because even if you think about it, like why, how are we even in this situation? Well, I th it, that's why I thought that we were the problem. I was like, you're yourself are the problem. Okay. And there it is. Okay. okay. So, okay. So claim, maybe it's just semantics. It's just yeah. Semantics. It, it could okay. be semantics. Yeah. All right. But just, it, just to but, make sure everybody's on the same page though. We're not right, blaming right. and saying, you know, because of white supremacy, we, it, it, that's the problem that, that that's, that's the challenge that's right. facing us. Right. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately the responsibility is always going to be you, your own, you know what I'm saying? See, and that's the, and that's how it's so crazy. Cause the brothers who come over here, that that's what they say to me. They're like, yo, it's not about white supremacy, man. It's about you and your spiritual awakening and what you have to go through. And when they talk to me, I can see clearly they don't think it's white supremacy. And it is. Right. Right. And yeah, then, yeah. And, and, and I'm like, OK, OK, yeah, I understand the whole chakra story and getting to the heart chakra and all that. But what you don't understand is that you're a coon and a sellout. Right. And yeah. it is white supremacy as far as yeah, I'm talking, about talking coon. with yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? And, and you thought you could jump ahead of it with the spiritual thing because you you think I'm a, I'm a guy who maybe doesn't get into spiritual topics much, but- You're gonna talk over your head, they think. Yeah, yeah. For me, that's that's almost a, a, a cop out when you don't say it's white supremacy. Cause yeah. uh, maybe, and that's what we said with the semantics. I know that white supremacy is not the ultimate problem. It's not the ceiling of our problems. You know, it is ultimately, you are the- One in our face every day. The one yeah. in our face 
every day in no matter what you do, whatever you, what, what yeah. endeavor you're you're what, attempting. You know, what are we supposed to do, Sterling? I get this. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to fight them. They have more guns than us. Even if even if we fight, you die doing it. What does that achieve? And I'm like, no, no, no. It's it's got nothing to do with that. I'm saying that everything that we think, everything that we have a problem with, stems from being raised under a system of white supremacy. And fighting doesn't equal guns. There's many ways to fight. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. right there, that's just like yeah, you jump right to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's a ridiculous comment in all and in and, and it's, it's dealing with uh, Japanese people because they don't feel like they're under white supremacy. They they'll see it as like you know I have a lot of so-called Buddhist friends who will say that like Stona, it's not about that. It's about you and how you deal with yourself. And I'm like, you don't even realize that you are stuck. You're under the heel of white supremacy as a Japanese person. Right. So um, ignoring it and completely jumping over it are both the same cop out to me. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the same, it's the same. Uh, and, it, and it's difficult because, um, you know, basically while you're talking to certain people, you know, it's not going to go nowhere. They've already, they've already convinced themselves there's nothing wrong. But the, the reason why I brought up the trauma thing is no matter what side you you're on or what perspective you see it as, uh, we're all victims of some kind of everyday life trauma. Okay. Let's go in on that. Cause I don't think a lot of people understand what we mean okay. when you say trauma. So what is this all, every day, everybody, everyday trauma let's talk about those terms what do you mean by that um everyday trauma is where uh you need to view the world not need to but it would behoove you to view the world as uh this world is designed for you to be in pain and and every pleasure you get is is something that you you win you know what i'm saying um not Oh, it's a beautiful day. Everything is nice. You're like, those are things that just come and go. It could be a bad day, but that's something you don't really have control over. You, you really need to know that this day, every day you wake up is going to be a test on your will. And the days that you break brings you closer and closer to some kind of pain that is really coming to, towards you. You know, the, 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 uh, the main reason why most people are in pain is because they don't see the world like that they never have so especially even when you were a child or wherever you go through your everyday life you don't see it as traumatic because it doesn't physically hurt you it, it like it's like a mental thing so um the, the biggest trauma victim phrase to me is just be nice being nice being nice is basically a way for your mind to not enforce your will and acknowledge that you've lost today. You've lost whatever reality you're facing. You, you, you're, you're just saying, I, I lost, I'm a loser, I'm a loser. And you remember, nice really just means stupid. That's right? what I tell people, and people get so yeah. offended when I say <laughs> that, you know? You know, but anytime people say nice, like, people catch themselves when they even talk to me now. They're like, uh, I know when I say, oh, well, he's nice, or that's a nice guy. Why are you talking about that? That's nice. And I'm like, yeah, you, you're basically calling it stupid, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, but I think right now we're still talking a little bit too metaphysical mm. um you know what i'm saying bring it down a notch like in everyday life how are how is the average person you what do you think receiving this trauma because you say it's kind of it's just going, just going, right? okay, it's going just, uh, waking up in the morning and facing your family or facing your loved one alone is trauma that's the first trauma and the next trauma is going away wait a minute wait a minute stop right there that's not a beautiful thing when you mean when you wake well, up and yeah trust the pain is a beautiful thing you know what i'm saying pain is a beautiful thing but i you know for anybody who tells me you know i i you know they give you the disney you can't even convince people but you give me the disney version of it i wake up in the morning and uh i'm just so happy to see my family you know and know that they're well and that they're alive that's all i need in life i'm like that is not all you need in life you know, I, I, there's a big apartment down the street from me right now where I know half of these people in this apartment would rather be in a house than be in an apartment and this little cramped apartment where everybody's in the same situation. They got like two kids. They all have the same job, low pay, not enough pay to get an actual house, which is what you want. But 
you make this coping mechanism in your brain so at least they're healthy at least it's safe and at least so they're, they're looking at the bright side is that kind of like looking at the bright side is that what people say yeah like looking at the okay. bright side and not being able to face the dark side that is always okay. there so there's nothing wrong with looking at the bright side yeah but you're saying that the, but but being a, unable or, or or in denial yes of the the not bright side i guess be the dark side um okay all right and i want to add to that i think that trauma is is um anytime you have to do think or, or, or yeah, do or think anything that you don't motherfucking feel like doing. Mm -hmm. And some of that stuff you need to do. Let's just face it. You need to wash your ass. You need, you know what I'm saying? And, and the, but the degree of it, you know what I'm saying? And then it gets to a point, there's an acceptable point. Yeah, you got to wash, you got to get up, you got to do certain things. And you, when you do it, you're glad you did. Oh, I'm glad I did it. Now I feel clean. Or, or 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 whatever I get paid, whatever it is. But there's a there's a certain level when you're asked to go outside of what you believe to be correct, you know, and to the point where you might do something every day, and then to the point where you forget that that's some shit you don't really like doing uh. because you've been traumatized. Why? Because in my control. One of the, the 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 three ways of mind control is is from trauma being traumatized, right? And repetitiveness, right? Right. That's the second one. So you're putting those two together, and pretty soon you forget that, i.e., white supremacy is actually bad. Yeah. Or your or your because, daily life is bad. Right. Because you're participating in it. Your daily you, life is bad because you don't, you can't change it, and you know deep down you can't change. There's nothing you can do about it. You're lucky to even have your life that you have right now. And if you can't you know, beat them, join them. Right. You know, based on your own weaknesses and inabilities, you should just accept things for the way they are. It could be worse. That's what your mind is telling you. It could be worse. Where so let's just make the best of this situation. Right. And that's what they're saying. Leave me alone. Let's just make the best of this situation. Your situation isn't isn't good either. And I'm not saying that I'm above trauma at all. I think the difference is, for example, you wrote your books. Uh, your books to me is nothing but you logging up trauma. Right. That's all it is. Fine. But I like talking about trauma. Because that's life. Because I'm trying to improve. And that, yeah, improve your life. It, it's not, if everything's fine, you, you're, you're giving me this, everything is fine. There are no problems. I'm like, well, then why are we even talking with each other? We don't have anything to talk about then. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm in the game of in, improving. And, uh, you know, I'm not talking about crying on your shoulder or nothing like that. I'm talking about here's the mess, mistakes and here's how we could correct them. See, this is the alpha conversation all over again because that's an alpha way of looking at things. Okay. You're coming with, you said it in a, in a previous video, and I, I, I'm going to use it for now. Like, we're about problem solving. It's about problem solving. You know what I'm saying? Whether you use the, the solution or not, we, we, that's what we do. We, we, we talk about the problem and then we talk about the solution. Mm. And then we move on. And a lot of people, like you said, they want to cry on your shoulder. It's that whole kind of the, the Mars and, and Venus thing. You know, like when you have like, like it's, it's traditionally or like a woman, they want to talk to you about things and the guy wants to what? Solve the problem. Uh -huh. Right, and she's like, "No, I just well, can you just listen?" Mm. No, and the guy, like, I I "No, I, I can't. I've listened. I, I've heard enough." Yeah, let's. I see a, a clear solution. Here's the solution, and let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that it's clear cut, and that's how it always should go. But that I'm saying that that's the war, or the battle. Yep. You know, we're giving you a masculine. I guess you could say. A problem solving. This is that's what this 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 uh, form is about. Exactly. You know. Exactly. You know. So trauma exists in all walks and phases of life. When you got to get up, when that alarm clock goes off, and you don't feel like getting up for work. You know that right there is, is the trauma that sets you up for the rest of the day. 
Um, anytime, you, like I said, you know, you're not hungry at, at, two, at 12 or one, but that's the time that you're allotted for your lunch break. So you know you're not gonna have another chance to eat and you know you will be hungry around two or three. You eat and you, you, you go against what your digestive system is telling you because you have to. Yeah. That's trauma. That's trauma. Yep. You can't even you can't even listen to your intuition anymore. You can't talk to people how you really feel on the inside. That's can't say the, what you want. That's the ultimate trauma to me. Because a lot of people, oh, you're blunt, you're a little too direct, you have no filter. I'm like, man, I am so sick of these indirect, over filtered PC. Uh, what what a South Park call them the PC babies and all this like don't don't say that I'm like nobody's around let's just talk about it like shh don't. you're like man can never be unfiltered can't be raw can't <laughs> you know, can't speak your mind yeah can't speak your um, mind yeah people get offended too easily you know um, so you see the trunk huh go no go ahead, go ahead I was like they get offended easily because it's like yo that will break me. That will that, don't that will break me. That you know, guys will when guys get offended, they always bring up how strong you are compared to the other one. You know, like you know, getting a fight or something like that. Women always talk about, well, what about you? You know, and it's it's. Uh, I'm kind of jumping here, but I'm I'm thinking about all the the typical excuses rather than if I'm bringing up a, a, a topic or a, a situation, and I'm talking about you, you specifically. You keep jumping to another person or me or something like that. Trying to conflate. Yeah, trying to conflate, yeah. And deflect. Those are the two of the biggest, again, this goes right into the beta thing. Um, those are beta characteristics. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with beta. And I want to say this because uh, somebody asked me recently when he was like, oh, you're doing another video? And I yeah. was like, yeah, so this is going to be another banging on betas? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, wow, is that what it seems like it's coming off as? And I guess, I guess it is. Mm. And really, it's kind of even banging on the beta baby in my own character. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not, you know, it's not like people are either alpha or beta. It's not, it, 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 there's a balance. And, and if we're banging, if I'm banging on anything, I was, I'm banging on the imbalance of, of the beta wave. And I'm just pointing it out because it's just so in my face. And if I don't talk about the elephant in the room, that's going to add to mental illness on my part. So I want to make that clear. Um, there's nothing wrong with beta. Betas and alphas go together. You yeah. can't have a whole room of alphas. Right. And it's like all chief, you know, all chiefs and no Indians. You exactly. Know? Exactly. You know? I'm already talking about myself if I'm talking about that. Right. You know? So you know, because <laughs> I'm tight. But um, yeah. So that's really what we're talking about. If you if you really I'm really when I, you know when we're talking about this this beta thing, and the, the fact is that we're we're being confronted with so much beta energy now, that um um it just seems it's more than being socially engineered it's it's just it's just an influx, and it's it's just too much of it, and I guess we're trying to I'm, I'm trying to encourage people to to delve into their uh, alpha side so to speak um but why is this such a big deal why is this even um topic worthy um i, I think i want to talk about i guess the topic that i want to go into which is the book that i'm writing modern japan decoded is a book and it's really for black people who live in japan and it's, it's kind of a, a survivor's guide and because of something that i'm seeing and I call them trauma victims all the time. Mm -hmm. And most of the black people that I see here, to me, really, really qualify as trauma victims. Mm -hmm. And they really also qualify as betas. And when yeah. you have a beta trauma victim, what you have is a person that's so recessive that just, they take the the, the, the beating. Yeah. And and they don't complain, but the, 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 the uh, side effects come out in other places, mm. and, and I, I hate to say this, but I, I bet you I'd be willing to guess in the next ten years you're going to start seeing like 
millinerist people, you know, so-called guys, you know, guy cuisine, committing suicide in Japan. Oh, definitely, definitely. Already you know, the whole, um, the whole bisexual couple thing amongst black people, the homosexual couple thing amongst black people, that was almost like a, a strictly white thing when I was younger. That's right. It's almost like standard practice, you know. Um, it's it's all conflated. It's it's all mixed together now. We all wanted to be the same so much that you take over every integration, yeah. integration, integration. Yeah. And now we're just so fully integrated that we've integrated with many of the wrong things. And let and let's make this clear. Well, this is not banging on on um alternate alternative lifestyles, no. being gay. That's not what we're talking about. Nothing wrong with that, yeah. You know, <clears throat> but the thing about it is, it is like um. Now, being gay is is I think we've talked about this in other videos. So I don't even want to get too much into it, but it just seems like a a choice, almost like going from let me, oh yeah, I you know I don't smoke, but when I'm drinking, yeah, I always see you smoking those cigarettes or those cigars. Let me get one. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try it yeah. while I'm drinking in this inebriated state. I'm not even inebriated, but you know, I'm feeling really cool right now. I'm chilling. Smoke one of those. Mm -hmm. Let me get a, you just put that, oh, let me get a dick in my mouth. Let me just try it. Yeah. And I don't think that, the, I think conflating those two things are, 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 there's so many things wrong with that. It, it is know? wrong if you're trying to call yourself a, in my eyes, a man. Uh, you know, uh, it doesn't even like you know. If you're gonna be whatever a man, you, you know, yeah. Whatever you're calling, yeah, 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 exactly. We're talking about yeah, we're talking about males at this point right now, yeah. And and you're you're yeah. It's just like let me just try something new, or it's it's cool. It's the new thing to do, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, how do I know I don't like it if I don't try it? Well, do you? I mean, I didn't. I knew I liked lasagna before I ate it. Right. Because everything about it. Yeah. My other senses were letting me know, yeah, this is the real deal, B. You want to dip it, dip it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I sensed it with, you know what I mean? Mm hmm. If that's how you're feeling about dick in your mouth, then I'd say, okay, I think we're, we're moving a little bit slow. So where were we? We're talking about how people can just switch from one lifestyle to another so easily. And when I mean lifestyles, I'm talking about just completely, just all over the board. You know, I don't, I don't know where to draw the line with people. You know, there, there used to be spaces for society. Like the whole, for example, the whole um, homosexual thing. Um, again, thanks to Panic, that whole um, Paris is Burning documentary where they're showing how the gay community helped do all the, with the Vogue and all that other, uh, all the balls they had, how they really helped with the hip hop fashion and all that and brought style to New York. Um, but there was a place for it, there was an area for it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying they need to be persecuted for the beliefs, but there's definitely a, not beliefs, but how they live. There's, there were lines drawn. You know what I'm saying? There was lines drawn. And now, I don't know where to draw the line. A, a, a father of three can be like, yeah, you know what? I, I think I'm gonna be gay for a little while. You know, <laughs> you can't, you just can't, uh, you don't know where, where any lines are anymore. There's no more definition of what a man is. There's no more definition of what a alpha is or a beta is, like it's, it's just all over the place. Yeah. And then if you speak in, in, in overly masculine tones, they want to try to define you as toxic masculine. Yeah. Um, just, you know, yeah. Um, and this kind of goes into what's going on right now in the news with that guy, what's his name, Andrew Bynum? Uh, no, Gillum. Is that his name? Gillum. Yeah. Andrew Gillum. Mm -hmm. And um, did you hear he had an interview with Tamron Hall, I think her name is? Yeah, I saw it, yeah. You saw the, you saw the interview itself? Yep. Okay, I saw uh, Jason Black's breakdown of it. Oh yeah, yeah. He well, well most of it. <laughs> um, but I mean, he's showing the video itself, and yeah, and he's giving his overtone, his overture of it, you could say. But um, it, I mean, it's on point, right? And this is an example because this guy is, he's 
he wants to be a politician. He wants to be, uh, what was that, a governor? Yeah. So he wants to run for public office where he's going to be a representative, you know, and, and be in a position of power. Yeah. And so this is not a regular person. So we, we need to know who you are. And you're going to sit up here and, and tell us that you just got drunk and passed out. And then you just woke up butt naked. And then said no sexual con, no, no, no sexual acts occurred, but yet there's all kind of stains on the sheets that nobody's addressing. Right, right. Like it, it, it just really, really just it just flies in our face, and, and it's like, but but what he's really saying to me is, it's what what everybody's yeah. the same. Yeah, this is not a big deal. Even though I'm lying to you, even though I got a beard over here you know, his wife and, and kid, like, and you have this alternative yeah. lifestyle. None of that even matters. Yeah. Is what he's trying to say. And then people will back him up. So what? He's living his truth. He's living, he's, 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 uh, and missed the whole point. Missed the whole point. So if he did it with a woman, if he cheated on, uh, if he cheated on his wife with another woman, you'd be all over him. Toxic masculinity and all this other stuff. Scandal. If you were found that. butt naked in a room with a bunch of whores. Yeah. How no, you, you can't escape that and act like everything's just normal and everything's okay. Right. No, mo most people don't go in rooms with, with a whole bunch of whores, no matter how much they might dream about it and watch it on Pornhub. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It, it just doesn't really happen. When, yeah, when it's real, yeah. And yeah. you're trying to be a representative for the people. I mean, this goes into your morals too. You're a policy, that's politician means a policymaker. Then what policies right. are you making for who? Right. And why? So you're into the you're into the position where you can enforce policies on others, but we can't enforce them on you. You're not even going to be honest about who you are. Right. You know what I'm saying. So, like I said, so this is a good. He Andrew Gillum. That's a perfect example of what this thing that we're talking about has the ability to spin off into. Yeah. And just that right there is enough, as far as I'm concerned for this to already be enough to, to be addressed. Because this is a person that people actually look up to. Right. How many schools has he gone to and, and given little lectures or, or, or talks? People right. bring him in, you know what I'm saying? But then and if I guy, said something like, if, if my son was going, I'm, I'm, I'd say something like, well, I don't want my son to be anywhere near him, especially if he's a child, because he has the propensity to be a child molester. I mean, like just looking at his acts and then I could see him or somebody who likes him taking offense to that. Like he didn't go that far, and like, well, what, how's how far am I supposed to 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 range this? You know, at the very least, he's dishonest. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't have to go further than that. I don't want him coming. I don't want some dishonest guy coming and speaking to my kids, and and he's really really lax sexually. Yeah, and he's being he's found in a hotel room. Yeah, butt naked, talking about I went there over friendship. Yeah. I visited some of my friends who happened to be in town and happened to be in a hotel. Yeah. But I ain't never had no, I ain't never got a hotel room to meet my friend. Yeah. A I don't male friend. Know, I don't even know people on that person of a level who would do something like that. Like if I saw it happening to you, if it came on the news and you was butting a whole lot of dudes in there, I've been like, they set his ass up. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's been exactly set way. up, you know what I'm saying? Drug thrown into <laughs> something. And I hope you would think the same of me because and there's no later, Yeah, there's no coming later on and being like, okay, here, look, I, I've been lying this whole time. This, this is the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. There's an you know, integrity you, that, that can't be. I want you to meet Ray. <laughs> yeah. There's an integrity you know? that, that you can't miss. Yeah, if, you, if you're an integral gay man, even that. But this whole, yeah, I got a wife and kids and you're out here and you want to be a politician. You just want to do everything. You know, integrity, like you said, you said the word integrity, like, like if he was gay and was like from the door, I'm gay and he got, and he's in a, in a, in a, a consensually, mutually respectful relationship. That's a whole different animal. He got caught in a room, butt naked party. Yeah. yeah. And he's trying to act like not only that, that it wasn't that, but there was nothing immoral that was going on. Like, that's just a, a real slap in the face. You know what I mean? Like, even just on, and you want me to trust you. Yeah. You want to be in a position where I'm supposed to trust your good judgment. 
Like you're you're way off the chart here. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to say, way off the chart. And that, that's where I think all of this goes. Um, I don't know, anything else you want to say about the, 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 the trauma thing before we move to um, the next thing, which is basically an extension of this topic? Yeah, that's 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 basically it. Yeah. Uh, well, um, instead of calling, I guess we say we could call them names. Really, I'm not I'm not name calling when I say the word uh, coon or sellout. It really is a behavior that you have uh, given yourself. You have deserved the title of. And you're a trauma victim. Yeah, and you're and, and in that's general that's you're a trauma victim. Yeah, and 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 really you're a trauma victim. Uh, yeah. Which is which is what seems everybody seems to agree with. Oh, there's a lot of trauma victims. I'm like, no, no, you're a trauma victim. To become a coon, you have to be have been traumatized into that state. Now, and what it, what you're being traumatized into, like staying in the beta. That's where they come. They they, they overlap. Uh -huh. you, you like you have an alpha and a beta even within yourself. There's some people that that, that lean more towards just naturally, uh -huh. and that's fine. That's nature. But when you're being traumatized into staying in the beta side of yourself, that's what we're talking about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like you're just constantly beta. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because you're just scared now. Exactly. You're scared to reach out and, and, and be like, no, I'm a dude, no. Well, what if I if I do that? What's going this gonna happen? This person gonna think this. And that might not even be anything that's big, but you're just just traumatizing me into being scared. You're acting like you have a choice and you're choosing the nice side, the beta side, when really you're telling me, you're showing me you have no choice. You're, you're Because you choose it all the time. And if you look at your last 10 choices, they were all, you think you're choosing, but you're always choosing this one thing. Right. Which is the beta side of it. Yeah, try choosing alpha then, since you're so, you have such a choice. Because if I can choose, I'm always gearing for, I'm, I'm always trying to become alpha. Are trying to choose the alpha uh, decision, and like you said, a lot of times I slip it up. It appeals to you. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and which way you lean? I, I lean. I would say I lean towards alpha. And uh, I had a friend uh, overhear us on the phone one time, but he was like, "Yeah, you were right. I, I was an alpha raised beta. You know, what I'm saying I lived in a beta world. Um, I'm not a millennial per se, but I'm close enough to it. So I understand the whole. Most of them are, have been raised in a beta world, but that." Even that being the case, once you become a grown man, uh, it's all it's all based on your choices. You still choose the beta side, then I can't. There's nothing I can do for it. There's right. Nothing I can say there's nothing I can say. You're still not letting go of your trauma. You know. Yeah, we bumped that. And yeah. so, why is this important? At least yes. for me, like I said, um, and I think I was, I was saying this before the the, the the previous technical difficulty, but. In the book that I'm writing, Modern Japan Decoded, it's a book basically a survivor's manual, a manual for, for melanin rich people, really black people who live in Japan. And one half of the book basically, and I haven't written that part yet, is just really about black people's trauma. Uh -huh. And it goes into what I call Gai Kogujin versus Gai Jin, without getting into that right now. Um, but talking about just being in a system that is perpetually pit against you, what the effects are. And um, a trend that I, I really, I kind of noticed, but it was put into words when I went to Gambia, West Africa, and I met a whole bunch of revolutionary rider brothers on the street. Mm. And they they were shocked because I stepped to them. And, um, and I'm like, yo, how come I don't ever meet no brothers like y'all? I mean, either in the States, any country I've been. And they started, they all, I mean, dudes in the back were laughing. This is so, this is something that everybody knows. And they were like, oh man, they don't, they only let the, uh, they didn't say the word coon, but that's what they were saying. They, they only let the real, yeah. um, they were saying colonized. They were using words like that, you know, like the real, uh, the people that go along with the system. And, they're, they're the only ones that are allowed to be let out. They don't let any riders come out. Uh -huh. you know, so you get this skewed image of what a, a Kenyan is or a Nigerian person is. You know what I'm saying? Because they're only letting a, 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 someone who meets all this criteria, which we would just loosely say are coons. Uh -huh. 
and these are the ones that we meet in in, in overabundance. One every now and then one slips by, you know what I'm saying? But over, you know, the abundance of them overwhelmingly are going to be, just, you know, for lack of a better term, coons. And I know uh, Tariq Najee likes to say foreign coons when he's talking about it in reference to the United States. Yes, yes. Yeah, coons in general. But uh, like you said, with Japan, I look at it as um, kind of like, you know, the Hollywood actors, they all, they're doing, doing all these drugs. They have a lot of, a lot of them have, uh, you know, complexes. Some of them, they, you know, uh, Tom Cruise, he's real short. And, you know, he thinks about his height all the time. And Sylvester Stallone too, that, that, that height short, complex, yeah. you know. And uh, Mel Gibson got caught, you know, complex. freaking out, thinking his woman was just banging all these black people. And you see these complexes coming out and the drugs really make it come out even stronger. And so they go to these places called rehab where they, they go there and they just, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's, you know, pools and skiing and all kinds of things. And, and all they have is just nice nurses and, and workers that are around that encourage them to just get off the drugs and, and reinforce that they're good people. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And that- Recover. And recover. And I'm not saying it doesn't work, but that's why a lot of them, they just keep going to rehab, coming out, doing the same stuff again, and then going back in again, and not really addressing their trauma, whatever happened to them in the past. Japan is like that to me. It's like a, it's like a big uh, middle-class Hollywood rehab for people who don't want to face their home anymore, or the, the problems going on back at home. And at the same time- Okay, they talking about for who? For who? For this foreigners- is for Japanese people? Japan. Okay, okay, yeah. we want to make that clear. We're talking about people who are not from Japan coming over to Japan. We're talking exclusively about them right now. Yes, they get treated like okay. the, the best guests. You know, um, you get taken out to dinner. Everything you do is cool. Uh, you're just so interesting to them and all this other stuff. And and you just kind of forget that uh, nobody was thinking about you when you were where you was where, where you came from. You know what I'm Most saying? of you are losers when you come over here. Right. That's just real. If you weren't really into something that Japanese specifically offers, yeah, then why did you come over here? It's because you weren't, you ain't have it going on in your home country. That's just right. It's an escape. It, yeah, right. And it, it doesn't make you a bad person. Nope. But how many of you are are, are willing to to own up to that? Uh huh. That's the first step. Right. Right. You know. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. They're all, right. they're all specialists in Japan. One way got it another. going on. Yeah, they all got it going on. Everybody got it going on, but you know you wouldn't get no no putang when where you came from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You weren't even getting no attention. Right. Now you're getting attention for these superficial means, superficial characteristics. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying don't run with the ball. I'm just saying just understand what's going on. And failing to understand that, I mean, yeah, everybody gonna go through it. You're gonna have fun with it. Ain't nobody mad at you. I did it too. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the point is how you come off of it. And if you're gonna stay here for long terms, for uh, on the, on the in the long term, and this is what I'm talking about, a lot of this, anytime you're in, 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 a, in a situation where you're not in touch with reality, in the end, if you continue, it's going to equal. It's going to. It's going to turn into mental illness, mm. and that's what I want to address. And avoiding mental illness. Wow. Okay. You know, what I'm saying for Black people in Japan, um, seeing the obstacles and seeing a lot of people, and I'm just going to address one because one that I really, really, it really, really gets under my skin as a Black man, and. Um, in spite of the fact that I don't have any biological children, I understand that societally, in society, I'm at the age of father uh -huh. in society. And because I know that in my walk, you know, I, I, I happen to be able to, I still deal with, with, um, with kids. Uh, I always have. And I address them like I'm their father. And they address me the same way, not necessarily in, in an endearing way, but I'm talking about, I talk to them that way. I instruct them that way. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Especially when I'm dealing with kids I know who are in their teens or younger. You know what I'm saying? I don't try to come up overbearing. But failure for me to do that could lead to mental illness because we have phases of life. And I happen to be in the father phase now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But yep. see, that, that's what I'm talking about. Understanding these kinds of things and, and being in your lane and being in your role is a key to being healthy mentally mm -hmm. in a mental health way. And, and foreigners, because when they come over here, they get thrown into this perpetual being a guest is number one, the whole guiding thing. Yeah. It leads to, to, to leaving the plane of reality. You know what I'm saying? And that, in the end, leads to mental illness. Wow. Anything you want to throw in there? Well, I wanted to know what kind of mental illness, like what kind of side effect is it to always be treated as a guest and never be able to get out of it, really? Well, it's when like you, especially that. when you first come over here, man, it's the greatest thing in the world because everybody smiles every, everywhere you go. Yep. You know, um, it's, you know, everybody thinks you're, like you said, you're cool. Like, I remember I heard... Some people say it's like kind of like being a rock star. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and yeah, run with that ball. You might get some booty out of it. You should if you yeah. if you really if you're really rolling with the punches. Yeah, um, I, I was I, I if you're not getting no booty out of the world, I really don't know. Yeah, you really you missed it. Man. Because um because um but but the thing about it is if you weren't getting no attention from where you came from it's all something that's superficial. I'm not saying don't have fun with it, but just understand what it is. Understand that it has a time limit. You know, it has it has a limit in, on your psyche mm -hmm. because the, the, that will never stop. You you go the same people will come up and keep doing that to you as long as you let them. Yes, but it becomes ridiculous after a while. It's kind of like waking up. You know, like those movies where you wake up and, and you keep doing the same thing every day. You know what I'm saying? And and you're like, wait a minute, this is kind of stupid. Let me do, let me choose something different to make this at least alter. And Japanese don't want to ever let you outside of that visitor role, you know? And it leads to mental illness. Um, The mental illness I want to address specifically before we get off is the, the one, the dynamic of these foreigners who, who are gaijin as opposed to being gai kokujin and they have children especially when it comes to I, I mean the father son dynamic is the one I'm most accustomed with um, from my social worker days so let me just address that just to really really stay in my lane I, I know enough a few guys white and black who have sons they're married to Japanese women and they have sons in Japan and these guys are the perpetual gaijin, meaning there are people who walk around pretty undignified and, and they, they're like a guest. They've been here for 10, 20, even more years, and they're kind of still a guest or there's still some kind of, of spectacle. Yeah. They don't really speak Japanese. Um, they can do, I'm not, they can't, no, they, yeah, they're, they're just guests. I'm not saying they're totally helpless, but they're, they're, they're not in the side, mm -hmm. or outside. And what happens is that the, the children, especially the sons who are looking for masculinity, they're looking for what I'm supposed to do. They're looking for cues. Mm -hmm. And the first thing is a boy, you're gonna look is to your father. But because they are fully ingrained in the society, meaning the language, they're, they're going to Japanese schools, they're seeing exactly what the Japanese people see. And the Japanese people see you as some kind of joke, some kind of, of, of pressure release system. They just come and play with you. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the child is going to see what they see. Yep. yep. And then this imbalance occurs when you try to go home and you're like, why don't you listen to me? Well, I don't listen to you. For the same reason, nobody listens nobody to listens you. Nobody listens to you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, how come you don't see it? And the fact you don't see it makes you even look dumber. Yeah. And these guys, they don't understand why their kids don't respect them. And I'm like, I would, I would, I would argue that that's not the only thing, but that's 
way up on the list. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, I could say that it can go the other way too with a lot of um, more likely to me women who marry or get with a foreigner and uh, for one reason or another they, they either divorce him or they, they, they're kind of uh, estranged from him now. Like they don't really talk to the, the, the husband anymore. And they're trying to raise this child, this foreign child in Japan. And they're kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Um, and and so the woman, in this case, the woman is a foreigner. The man the is, is Japanese. Japanese. No, the woman is Japanese. The and woman the is man, Japanese. And the man is the foreigner. And the man the is the foreigner, foreigner in the picture. The woman is okay. a half child. Uh, by themselves in Japan, and because okay. she's Japanese, she she's kind of stuck because she she was fine when she was with the man, but now she's kind of trying to raise the child Japanese, but at the same time that they don't, especially if they're black, they don't look Japanese at all, you know. And uh, you know, you can just see a whole road of complexes down the way for this child, you know, because they have nothing, they have no idea what black a black person is like. They like you just said when they see American or African, they they go off of a continent. They don't go off of a country. They they see Americans as all they, they see American culture as white culture, and uh, yeah, and so they just kind of raise them as okay, you're half Japanese and you're half foreigner, not you're half Nigerian or you're half Gambian, no, uh, half yeah. American. You're, you're half foreigner and half Japanese, which just really screws them up. Or just black foreigner at best. Yeah, at best, you know, and that's. And that's even the minority of yeah. people. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and there's a lot of complexes that that rise up from this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I I just see it. You know the the, the side effects of, of these complexes of their children not respecting them. Mm -hmm. You know, to try to live under a house where a boy a boy is becoming a man, and he looking at you like you a clown. Yeah. And you are a clown. Yeah. You've had 10, 12, 15 years, and you haven't even come up in this at all. And, and, and you can say, well, uh, it's not the language barrier. See, a lot of people will try to throw it into that. I mean, it would help if you could speak <laughs> Japanese, definitely. But I know guys who don't speak Japanese well at all, and and it's, that's not it. Yeah. Because they, they, as a man, they learn. They go, I don't speak Japanese well at all. I'm not trying to speak Japanese, and they, they, they approach it as a man, and they fix it. Mm -hmm. They do whatever they. They'll have their kids speak, and they're not even like. I mean, in the state, I knew. I mean, I've, I've been around bilingual and trilingual people all my life, and there's a lot of parents that are like, just say this to them. Yeah. But in the house, they, 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 they know what time it is, and the kid mm -hmm. never acting like. Because why? Because they're not trying to pretend. Number one that they can do something that they can't do. You know what I'm saying? They're just being themselves and they understand their, what their role is with their child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're not trying to be their friend. They're not you trying to be their friend. Exactly. exactly. You know? yeah. not, to be, not, not to be conflated with, you can't be friendly with your child. There goes that nice thing again. Yeah. Not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about you know? what we see. What we see in you, you know, you're demanding a level level of respect. I, I, I'm very friendly to any foreigner or Japanese person who comes around. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to cause no trouble. But if you, if you come to me, what I would consider disrespectful, you know, um, this guy just met me and he was just like, hey, nice to meet you. And I was like, hey, Yoroshiku. He was like, oh, you speak Japanese. How old are you? I, I just, I just, uh, I just stopped talking to him. I just walked away. This is a, okay, this is a guy you, you, you're meeting for the first time. Uh, this is yeah. how yep. he's yep. presenting himself. He's Japanese, yeah. Yeah. And his English is good. And we met on the platform as in um, he may want to take a lesson eventually. So I, I am looking like an English teacher to him. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost like, hey, be nice to me. I could be a potential student. And I have no problem being extra nice, you know, especially when it comes to business. But it doesn't mean I got to answer your question in any kind of way like that. That's just that's just really off key to me. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, I, I mean, it, it has it. 
if I let you, if I, if I play into that conversation now, you're never going to take me seriously. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell you what, what I see the world as, what I, what kind of person I try to make myself viewed as. You're not going to just come to me and just start asking how old I am. I don't even know you. I hope you wouldn't think that of me as well. You know what I'm saying? I told you that one about the, uh, the man who was like, you can ask my, you can ask me anything. Me and me and my family, you can ask me anything. And I, I turned around to his wife and I was okay, like, well, well, before, we got to preface that because you jump, nobody's going to get it. So this is something we call the Gaijin interview. Uh -huh. Okay. And it's going to definitely be in the book and the Japanese, when they meet you, they just think that they can jump into this interrogation with you uh -huh. and they want to and put you on the answering side of the, of the scheme. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about an incident where a man was doing that to him. Am I correct? Right. Right. Yeah, so pick it up from there. So this guy was doing it to him and he was acting like, whoa, well, what's wrong with that? Yeah, he's sitting here with his wife and uh, his wife wasn't really even talking. She was just kind of off to the side. And uh, I was like, well, you know, I always say, would you say that to a Japanese person? Uh, would you would you, would you you ask a Japanese person something like that? And a lot of them will say, yeah, I would. I would say that to a Japanese person. And I'm like, I'm and sure- that's what that guy said, right? That guy yeah. said that, right? Right, and, I, and, and, and thinking about him, I'm, I'm sure he would. Sure, he would uh, do that because there's a lot of um, times, you know, they they do sound like they're polite a lot of times, but when they when something unexpected happens, they'll automatically do something very uh, direct or rude. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially anything connected to English. So, and I spoke Japanese to him, so he was just throwing off, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, but I, I would I would ask uh, any Japanese person that, and you can ask me that." I don't mind telling you. I was like, so I can just ask you any personal question and you don't mind? He was like, yeah. And I just turned around to his wife and I was like, so when is your, your first love? Like when you actually got intimate with a man, like when you kissed him, like when you held him, something like that. I was like, because you've been with this man, they, they, there's an older couple, you know, there's an older couple. So, and they've been together since, I think he said they've been together since middle school or something like that. And they're like in their forties, would you say? Uh, no, I'll say fifties. Okay. All right. You know, oh, you know, the fifties. Okay. Yeah. In the fifties, and um, you know, their their kids are grown, out of the house, kind of thing, and they've been together. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. So I'm th I'm thinking in my mind when I heard that, like, wow, you've been with him since middle school. Have you had any other men besides him? Is what I'm thinking, but I'm not going to ask it. I don't know you like that. But now that we're, we're, you can ask me anything question came up. Nah, that's what I want to know. I don't really care how old the man is. I want to know about his wife. So I was like, yo, so have you been with any other men other than him? Have you been intimate with another man or kissed a man? And he turned around. He was like, don't ask my wife those questions. And I was like, whoa, whoa, now you're mad at me? Like, <laughs> I thought we, I thought, <laughs> yeah, it's just funny. I thought personal questions were okay. I thought everything was okay. But he was like, no, you can ask me personal questions. I was out of, that, that, that doesn't, you know. That doesn't count. So, yeah, yeah, it was it was just kind of funny, you know, because <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, the the, the it, I don't I would consider this man an alpha, actually. But hey, yeah, so yeah, this guy's interview thing um, is is as a mother, and um, and. This is an example of something that you undergo for a thousand times. It beats you into a place of, of being recessive and you think there's nothing wrong with it. And, and your guard is not up. Yeah. And you th and you just keep accepting it. And, and you, and like I said, in Japan, see what the thing about it is, is Japanese will always come at you and, and tell you and brag even like, how safe Japan is. Uh-huh. And for years, I, I went along with it, but I was like, there's something wrong with that. And, I, and I'm gonna give myself credit for this because I never heard anybody say this, really, you know. Um, but I, I started saying, wait a minute, no, Japan is not a safe country. I mean, just the suicide rate by itself. Ooh, Can yeah. you hear me? Are we, are we on? Okay, I'm here. Yeah. Just the suicide rate by itself, and we're not even talking about the hikikomori, as a lot of people know now, they're, they're these recluse people. Uh, the ones who can't leave the house, yeah. Right, I mean, just those, and the, the, we have the special terms like karoshi, where people work themselves to death. You don't have that in other countries, a, a special terminology. Yeah. 
You, you, you know what I mean? Um, just like he was talking about the special terminology for different allergies. They have special terminology for different kinds of rain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and another one is uh, of dying, of, of working yourself to death or of dying from trauma mm-hmm. or, or, or living or, or dealing with trauma. It's like an accepted part of Japanese society. Yeah. Not like. Gambare. That's part of the Yamato code I talk about, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and the, the, these it, it, there are side effects to this, and and um and the side effects are not just for Japanese people, and now we're starting to see the side effects of, of as the influx of of melanin rich people come to Japan, and you're starting to see these people out here. I mean. It's hard not to come across one that is, you like. He's just not a straight up clown. <laughs> yeah. You no. Know, um, you know, to meet a solid brother, a solid sister, that ain't just cooned out. Hard to come by, boy. Is 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 really really difficult to come by. Yeah. You know, a lot of people want to get offended when hearing that. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? And they need to get offended. Yeah, we're not you know here. What? Yeah. yeah, I'm here to offend you. Yeah, that's what I'd be telling. In this them. case, in this case, they need, need to be offended because they're offensive. They are offensive. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and a lot of them, they come. I remember I, I, the one brother I told you, um, Kenyan dude, came meet some other Kenyan guy that was here. Shout out to Kev, and um, I remember this clown. He was like. He, he said it, he actually said it. he's drinking, he's getting loose. And he was like, yeah, I'm in Japan. He just got off the boat and we got the plane, you know what I'm saying? And he actually said, he was like, here, nobody knows me. I can do whatever I want, be whoever I want. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. what do you mean? You can just do whatever you want. I know you, you've heard this story, I've told you this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, <laughs> your ancestors, you don't think they can see you over here? And he never thought I was gonna come at him like that. Cause you know, you know, you know brother from the, out, from the continent, no matter what he tried to be, he's still hardwired into his ancestors. Yeah. And, and you know, and for a minute, I thought I fucked his, his, his mind up a little bit where it was gonna get him, but nah, later that night, he was just as, still acting like an asshole. I remember he came up and actually was like, said something, we were saying something, he was like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, then he said that. And just, yeah. Was, I, I, I talked about this? Yeah. Okay, I don't want to, yeah, yeah, but I was like, yo, man, for, you know, you ain't my friend, motherfucker. Don't be coming up to me like that. Well, these you know? these, these these stories are, are so, um, you definitely talked about it in one of the videos, but yeah, it, <laughs> these are the ones that just stand out the most, you know? The, 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 uh, most of these most of these cats, is they're not even worth really thinking about again, so it, only the ones that really stand out are the ones that you just <laughs> keep swirling around the, in your head. But uh, it's the same old story. It's the same thing again and again. It's the same formula, you know, and it's a formula for failure as far as I'm concerned when you're looking at it. You know, you're looking at a formula for failure and you're trying to come to me like you're some kind of success story. Yeah. Or, or being in Japan is your success story. You're like, it ain't no different over here. You're still gonna have to face yourself. You're still gonna have to talk about this shit. And you ain't tricking nobody over here. You know what I'm saying? I'm pointing at myself. I'm not falling for it. I know what you're doing out here. It's, it's all fine and well, you know, but I guess it's just like like uh, how, how my man Corey Holt can be talking about how, how they really get down in Hollywood, you know? And he's like, yo, you can act like you ain't fruit booty, but you are, you know, the majority of people out there are fruit booty, you know, so, yeah. One, two, one, two, there. Yep, I'm, I'm hearing you. Shout out to the 5150. Hell yeah. Same nation. Yeah. Same. Well, it, and there, yeah. there's hope for those um, details out there too for that because um, Craig Fax Show, Jason Black, Tariq Nasheed, 5150, uh, Black Magic, uh, Professor Griff. There, 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 are, there are a lot of real cats out 363, there. 363, yeah. 363, yeah. Black Magic 363, all that. Uh, Urban X, all them, all them cats. You know what I'm Put saying? Put it down. Yeah, yeah, so I guess in one way, even though hope is a hopeless task, 
as far as I'm concerned, again, um, there's still hope in the world when I see cats like that doing their thing. Really make yeah, they fine. Yeah, that, you know, and um, yeah, for folks, if you're checking this out, like those are the shows that we recommend. There's a couple more, but not too many more. Bill Williams, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, like even watching some of those sites will probably even give you insight to what we're talking about. But we're gonna, like we're keeping it on the, the Japanese track. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, but a lot of the, the insights that we're talking about the cats that come um, over here could never even watch a show like that. No. Right. So we're kind of we're, we're going to be chewing it up for you and, and spitting it out so you can eat it in, in, in you know, I don't want to be, you know, gross, but uh, Maybe you know, in, in, in bite like chunks. chunks. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Right size chunks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right size chunks. But again, and applying it to, to Japan because I'm telling you, I'm seeing these people. And I'm seeing more and more just straight up cooned out dudes and women, and I'm not really seeing anything but that. You know, um, uh, I'm glad that, you know, my brother uh, Ronzo puts on the, the Black Experience in Japan just so he, he can give, you know, I can see some solid Black people at, in Japan right. that I look forward to, to meeting, you know, meeting one day or having some sort of, 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 you know, alliance with, you know? Um, the, so I know that we're out there. Yeah. You know, but the ones I see, you know, coming across my, 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 my plate or my path, man, I'm like, son, like what's going on with you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's I know a chick. Good. It's all good that they come here with that because at least you got to get away from all that all that stress over from wherever you're coming from. Like I said, you need to get away. You need to escape. Right. Yeah. But, the, but the thing that I, a lot of them miss is that they're so cooned out. Like there's no reward for cooning in Japan. I'm gonna mm -hmm. say it again. There are, there's no reward unless you work for a white owned company, mm -hmm. a directly white owned company, then maybe you have a different situation, but that's not the normal situation. If you working alongside Japanese people, you know, there's there's no reward. You're and not going to get paid Kunin, an extra What do you mean end. by Kunin in Japan? What do you mean by Kunin in Japan? You you can you can say what you want. You can even talk about racism in Japan. Yeah. And you're not going to get blackballed. You're not going to get nothing. They're just going to listen to you and they're actually they're probably open their minds. You don't have to be afraid over here to do that on your platform, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to uh, talk white or none of that stuff. So, so uh, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Or, and, or and people, a corner. lot of people. Or you said what? What even being a foreigner? Even even playing into their foreigner thing for them, you know. Um, you don't have to do any of that. I'll, I'll ask you, you I'll can answer do... any question you have. I, I'm I'll talk about my where I'm from. I'll I'll talk about whatever, you know. Like, do you do you do you use chopsticks? Like, sure, I use chopsticks. Like, you, you answer all their questions. You can be the friendliest guy. It gets you not in any better position. You know? None of that. None of that. It works. As a matter of fact, like I said, you got to think about the word. If you're going to be here for a minute, you know what I'm saying. I mean, if you're going to be here for a, a year couple months oh go ahead and, hey by all means man you know what i'm saying you're gonna you're gonna be invited to all kind of karaoke parties you're gonna be girls there you know guy whatever you're gonna have fun you know what i'm saying yeah come by all that shit you know what i mean you know by all means but if you're trying to establish something here and do something here um in in any relationship if your mother and father didn't tell you to, respect mm. is the only thing that works and respect only starts with, it starts with self-respect. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna respect you if you don't respect yourself. If you respect yourself, you're gonna project that. Yeah. If you project that, you're not gonna sit here and answer anybody's questions over and over again, the same questions over and over again. At some point, you're gonna reach a limit. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be like, yo, this is enough. And like I said, what we're trying to do is prepare you to already know that that's coming because you don't want to hit the wall. See, the thing about mental illness, which is, is strange other than other kinds of attacks, other forms of attacks is, it's so subtle when it begins that it doesn't even seem like it matters. Uh -huh. By the time it matters, there's no escaping it. 
unless you really find an escape. Mm. You can't play it off anymore because it's like it's like the rising tide of water in a room. Mm. Put down by your, your your ankles, you could be on the phone talking and chilling. Uh. But when it gets here, there's no even if they stop it, it's still here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You ain't like you chilling anymore. Right. But the thing is, it's not gonna stop. It's gonna kill you. It's gonna kill you. It's going to kill you. Uh huh. And that's the thing about it. So you you want to get it where it went by with your ankles. Oh, I see it. Oh, it's wet in here. Uh huh. You want to now? You want to start stemming the leak where it doesn't even become a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But people they want to wait until you're and like I said, in ten years before ten years. You're gonna start seeing. There's gonna be people are gonna if they if they don't catch on and start stemming this this whole being recessive all the time and being forced into this corner of being a visitor. Mm. There's gonna be implosion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the the bearer of, of bad news or, or or predicting negative things. I'm just saying what I know about mental illness. Mm. You know, I'm seeing it now. It ain't there yet. The water's down by people's ankles. How many people are gonna are gonna catch on? Mm. You know, step in the tide. At least grab a paddle on the boat. Yeah, yeah. Modern Japan decoded. That's what we're gonna be talking about. Mm. Mm. Stemming, you know, getting getting out of that. You know, what I'm saying not only getting out of that situation. But getting yourself into a, a nice dry house that you can do what you want. Right. Be who you want. You ain't gotta forfeit any of your beliefs. We ain't talking about changing your religion. I, I'm just talking about a, a sidestepping the mental illness and putting yourself on a, a, a platform of power where yep. you can empower yourself. That's it. Right on. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that's real talk. I, I see how um, you know, I've been reading the uh, some of the the, the uh, translations of the Buddhist scriptures and all that lately, and uh, he even says, uh, I was gonna read one of them. He's like, uh, he who have, uh, Buddha. Okay. Uh, you have to you you go through this life and you see that uh, he says that uh, a willingness to face pain. And, and the trauma, he's like uh, yoga practitioners and people like that are practicing their time trying to uh, trying to escape it. Uh, aesthetic people, like uh, religious people are trying to exaggerate it. And then materialists and lay people are, are busy trying to minimize their pain. Okay, is it only three? Yeah, those three, yeah. Okay, say, say it again. All right, so uh, so-called spiritual people, the yoga Aesthetic practitioners, uh, yeah, yo well, yoga practitioners and all that. But not yoga. aesthetic, free. Just be free and 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 work on you know, um, the you know, uh, bringing everybody together in the world and and uh, let's go outside and meditate, okay. and freeze, and da -da -da. they're basically trying to escape it. That's okay. Who, to me, who even come to Japan. Then religious people, uh, people who who can discipline themselves religiously, they're aesthetic. Uh, they're they're trying to exaggerate the pain, right? Hmm, they're trying to they're trying to exaggerate the pain. So like uh like Christian like uh, Christianity, you know, um, he died for your sins and, and he was punished and and if you don't if you don't do it right, if you don't okay. if you don't focus on on saving yourself and saving other people, uh, you will burn in hell. Saying. Okay, they emphasize the point in exaggerate. Okay, I got yeah, it. Okay, you, okay. You, you, scare, you, you scare yourself out of it, or you're trying to scare yourself away from doing bad things, basically. You're exaggerating. Okay. It's not that bad. You don't have to, it's not that bad. You know? And then material lay people try to minimize their pain altogether. Everything's fine. No, 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 it's fine. It's not, no, I, I know, wow. I know, I don't like it, but it's, it's okay. And what can you do? What can you do? Yeah. So the, okay. uh, I, I got some, I'm gonna read it real quick. He says, the Buddha applied this logic to both pleasure and pain. It is a silly to reject pleasurable feelings as it is to cultivate painful ones. 
uh, but equally foolish to mindlessly pursue unstable pleasures in an attempt to blot out the anguish inherent to life. Right? And uh, he said, he to said, blot out the, to blot out what? To blot out the anguish inherent to life. So we're all trauma victims. You can't just go around talking about where I'm fine and nothing happened. I had a good childhood. Everything happened to my, my parents were great. Everything was fine. I, I was, school was good. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's so life I'm is about pain. Yeah, and it's about anguish. This life is about pain. It's about anguish. Yeah. 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 And uh, in later years, the Buddhist cultures that grew up in India and then in Tibet, the word that was used to describe the world we inhabit is translated as tolerable, quote, tolerable, in the sense of being barely tolerable. Mm. And Buddha believed that this quality of, quote, barely tolerable was perfect for spiritual and psychological growth. The fragility of things is apparent to those who look, but if the mind can be taught to hold the insustainability with some measure of equanimity, a new kind of happiness reveals itself. So basically, we're, we're looking at the world, that's, I, I see that's how you and I are looking at it right now. Like, I know it's messed up and it's fragile and I don't wanna beat, it, beat people over the head with it and tell you you're a loser and tell you you're just a straight coon or sellout. Maybe you don't even realize it, but at the same time, this world is not uh, this happy, happy place you keep trying to convince me of. If anything, this world is translated as barely tolerable. <laughs> you just, if you can, if you can just tolerate it enough, another happiness will reveal itself. <laughs> oh man! And it's meant to be. Yeah, it is meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's meant to be. This, this is the yeah, true, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't expect any more. Another way of saying it is, is that this world. Yep. Another way of saying that is that this world is flawed. Yes. It's flawed. It's naturally flawed. And there is no fixing it. Yeah. There's no fixing it. You can't fix it. It's not, it's not meant to be fixed. That's a better way. It's not meant to be fixed, but you can fix you. Uh-huh. I think that's that's the gist of it. And um and that's yeah, what what we're talking about right here, that's what we're trying to go with um this this podcast, that's what we're trying to go with uh Modern Japan Decoded. Modern Japan Decoded is gonna be like a again a survivor's guide because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you continue this guy gene thing, if you're not a guy gene, if you are a guy gene, then just go ahead and be a guy gene and just keep on doing that. Go to your little your guy gene bar and and just do you nothing sacred and all that's cool. I ain't even mad at you. But for those of you that want to live with a certain level of dignity, and you're over here, um, there's certain things that you need to know, and there's certain things you need to recognize mm -hmm. in order to put yourself in a position to be to have a dignified existence on a, on on a, on a everyday basis. It's not easy. These, the code is strong here, you know. And, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, like, even today I was on the phone, I'm talking to some dude on the phone and I'm in, in the, in the store. And sometimes you, when you understand the code, when you understand the code, you, you can just use it to your, your advantage. And here's one I'm going to let you know. I'm in the store. I'm, I got a, uh, my, my nifty cool Bluetooth, uh, headphones headphone set so you know i got i'm talking but it doesn't look like i'm talking mm -hmm. and i'm in the i'm in the store now at a certain time i'm in the store it's a lot of old women in there and when you get around old women in japan you'll know they like to get in your way if you're in a rush <laughs> you know you there one two one two i'm there you hear me Pack. Well, yeah, that lady at the store. Yeah, so using the guy, the uh, the Yamato code to your advantage, just understanding your place and understanding Jap the psyche of the Japanese person, mm -hmm. and being able to put use it to your advantage. Sometimes things that well, you didn't like tell you didn't tell us a story about the lady in the store though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say 
Okay. Some, um, sometimes things that are negative normally, you can just spin it around and use it to your advantage. So in this case, I'm in the store, and there's a lot of old ladies in there. And if you know anything about these obasans, they call them obasans in, 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 in Japan. Mm -hmm. They like to, if you're in a rush, they like to get in your way. Mm -hmm. They know you you can't just push them out the way, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know, especially in Osaka, man. When I'm in Osaka, I'm like, yeah. It's pushy, yeah. Yeah, and I'm in Nagoya, but it's still, it's just, it's just something, you know, they just like to get in your way. So I'm walking through the store and I was gonna get off the phone, which is the normal custom in Japan. You don't wanna talk, you don't wanna bother people. They are very big on that. But I was like, yo, I'm just, I need to get in here. It's, it, it's, it's the grocery store. I just, I'm trying to get some almond milk. I just want one thing. Mm. I'll grab a couple of fruits on the way because I have to come walk past them. But um, I really just want that and I want to be out. So you know, grocery stores, you got to walk all the way around the store to get the three things you need. Uh -huh. And, um, yo, know, I just stayed on the phone and every time I seen the Obas I was coming, I would just start talking in English uh -huh. to him. When they hear English, everybody gets out the way. Wow. And why, why do they do that? Because it's a glitch in the matrix, right? So once you, you the glitch in the matrix, everybody looks at it. And Japanese don't want to be in the picture when there's a glitch because it's, it's off code. Uh -huh. So they instantly get away from whatever the glitch is because uh -huh. it's weird, it's strange, it, it's, it, it's bad, it's evil even. You know what I'm saying? So me knowing that, I was like, well, this is a moment where normally you don't want that to happen. Especially I don't. But I'm like, I just need to get through here. So if I speak in English, I know everybody's gonna move out the way. Yeah, yeah, they don't wanna be around for that, yeah. Right, and sure enough, that's what happened. Everybody was get out the way, I walked right through, got my my, my couple of fruits, my, my couple of kiwi, and some, some almond milk. And I even grabbed a couple of okazu, like, you know, um, some side dishes because yeah. they place that they make them fresh right there and was in the, in line yeah. at least five minutes faster than I would have been if I would have just been doing the, the Yamato code way mm. of, of blending in and, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I kind of exploited it to my advantage. Right, right, right. That's, that's uh, you know? another way to use it, yep. But how many people know that? You know what I'm saying? Or know it consciously. If I sit here and say that, if you speak Japanese or uh, English, people will look at you. Most foreigners will say, yeah, I, yeah, but we, you just do that and, and be the weird guy in the room. They look at you weird all the time. Mm -hmm. But how many of you know how to use that to your advantage? Mm -hmm. You're when to use that shit, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Playing both sides of it. You know, uh, staying staying on offense. Stay you want to stay on offense as much as possible. Mm. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. You don't. You want to have a real strong defense, mm. and you're gonna you, you'll build your defense when you get here because when they're when they're onslaughting you with all the guys and stuff before you learn about it. But once you you get the experience, that's when you have to be able to shut it off and then go on offense. Mm. And then the times when you have to go on de defense, the defense is there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man. You know, that's that's, that's uh, a put it. Yeah, staying on yeah, offense is definitely a better position than being always on the defense. Yeah, you have a much better chance of scoring when you're on offense than when you're than your defense scoring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in any sport. You know what I mean? Is that the same for chess? Is it easier to be on the offensive side? Yeah, when you that's why they make the white guys or the white side is the offense, right? You get to go first. Right. Yeah, man, you play on offense is much different. Like that's why when you're on, you're playing the black side, yeah, when you get that dude when he's attacking and you get him to back off. Yeah. Then it switches. Okay. And then you're on the offense. You know what I'm saying? So would you say like for example a a a beta or somebody like that would look at it and say, no, it's actually better not to be on the offense because I don't know what move I'm going to make first. I'm, I'm better off just seeing what move you're going to make and play it safe. Because to me, that's how people really do talk. Like everybody's on this play it safe thing, you know? 
And it's like, yo, I'm 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 rather uh, be on the offense and risk making a mistake than always sitting back playing it safe. And that's just the trauma speaking. Okay. Because if you think about it, just any sport, how are you going to score if you're afraid to be on offense? Yeah. You're trying not to lose mm-hmm. in, 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 instead of trying to win. It's not the same thing. Okay, say that again. You're trying not yeah. to lose. Yeah, you're trying not to lose. You're like, I, I can't. If I do that, I might lose. I might, you know what I'm saying? But you're forgetting your offensive weapons. You know what I'm saying? You're depl- you're, you're you're depending totally on your defense. That's what I was trying to say. You want to stay on offense. You just because you're on offense doesn't mean I'm even speaking in um in, in American football terms. You don't mean you have to throw a bomb. Mm. You have handoffs. You have screen passes. If you're if you're talking about soccer, you don't got to kick the ball all the way up the field. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You pass. You know what I'm saying? You work whatever your game is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know, in baseball, you can you can sacrifice bunt. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to go for the home run. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean just because you're on offense. No, you score the best way you know how to score. Yeah. You can score conservatively. You can have a conservative offense. But the point is, if you're on offense, that means the other person's on defense. That's true. And that means they ain't scoring against you. As a man... Yeah. Should you always try to be on the offense? Is it is it feminine to be on the defense? Well, when we talk about feminine and, and masculine here, it's not it's, it, it's sexually sexual in a way. It's more like alpha beta. It's it's, it's psychological. It's mental. Well, like if so even if you're a, if you're talking if there's a if you're trying to get a girl, for example, a lot of guys want to try to dress nice or just hang around a whole lot of other guys who have girls and just sit around hoping that a girl will notice them or like go to a place. That, Make it look uh, hope a girl will notice them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. you know deep down, if you're if you're an actual, I guess what you would call an alpha male, you know if there's a girl who like you, you're gonna have to talk to her first. You're gonna have to go up to her right. and talk to her. You you I mean you can pull a girl sitting around just doing the, the defense. And a lot of people argue, I don't I don't go and hit on no girl. I I do what I do and girl come to me. Okay, okay, but really you the girl you want to get a girl that, that you want, you gotta be on the offense. Yeah, yeah, you got. Yeah, you're gonna have to go on offense at least. Yeah, even if the girl comes to you, you're still gonna have to go on offense inside of that conversation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm sorry, you 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 asked a question. Well, I was just saying, is it is it feminine to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, it's more of an alpha beta thing again. But is it feminine for a man to always want to be on the defense? They talk yeah. defensively. They talk defensively. They're always defensively talking. Every well, time I beta. talk to somebody, they're defending themselves. It's it's beta. Okay. It's it, like I said, and you you and I, I again. Everything is balanced. I'm not saying you want to always be on offense, but I think offense is the one that you have to be more concerned with uh-huh. because people are the onslaught is always on. Mm. You're always like I said. You have to have a strong defense. Mm. But you don't have to worry about being on defense. The world is always society's always trying to put you on defense. Okay. So you have to be more you have to be concerned with making sure you're getting you're getting your offensive reps in. Yeah. I think that's the best way of putting it. You, you because if you don't if you're not concerned about offense, you're never gonna be on offense. People yeah. will just keep you on your heels all the time. Uh-huh. And that leads to mental illness. That's the point. No matter what you want to say about oh, no no. I'm talking about avoiding, I'm talking about being mentally healthy. Hmm. That's what I'm talking about. And if you can't, you can't, if you're not relaxed, you're not mentally healthy. I am relaxed. I am relaxed. Yeah. Okay. Like even, like even small things like, like, yeah, I like to have more money. Who wouldn't? Right. Now you put it that way. But like even small things like this morning, when I woke up and this time, you know, I'm like, yeah, I need to get up right now, but you know what? I'm even gonna sleep a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Just cause I don't really feel like my body is ready to get up. And I pretty much have that luxury. Yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and um, me having been in the army, having had full-time jobs at schools where I had to be in Chode, the morning meeting, rain you know sun, you know and, and, and um 
you that's a certain level of trauma that's associated that's associated that I really really um don't take for granted I'm really appreciative because I've been on the other side of the fence mm. whereas like a, a matter of fact you were one of the the people I used to walk literally we I used to live in this we used to live in the same town that's where we met Mm-hmm. It's the town where he lives in, but he lived in a, um, a different part of it. And he lived right next to the station. And I used to literally walk past his house yeah. in the morning. And I'd be up and I used to actually, you know, like, you know, when you, I guess I'm just a young boy at heart. You, you, it's your boy. And you think, yeah, I'm going to go by and say, what's up? Like this nigga want to talk to me at, at, at six in the morning. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Six yeah, in the yeah. morning. If it was like, if it was like a little. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this pub, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody yeah. trying to talk to your ass. And I would get there. I never knocked though. I, but I mean, I did it like ten times. Like, yeah. maybe he'll be. There ain't nobody up at the six thirty in the morning except your ass that got to go to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know. Yep. And I was like, wait a minute. Why am I up and he sleep? Mm. And no matter the, how good a job I thought I had, and I had a good. It was a good. It was a good career position. Yeah. But it wasn't that good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying it wasn't that good. And when I say it wasn't that good, was um, I'm saying there's for me there's no there's no there's nothing worth trading. For me, that's traumatic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For some people, you say no, I like be okay. Well, then I ain't talking about you. But for me, I knew I was like yo, I don't want to live the rest of my life having to get up like this in the morning. Cause, you know, I'm a writer. You know, I was aspiring to be a writer at that time. I didn't, I hadn't become yet, but I was thinking about. It. I like to be up at night. I like my thoughts. Yeah. Reading. If I'm not writing, I'm reading. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a special time. And I was like, nah, that does not conducive with having to be, you know, catching a train at 6:25 in the morning. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, the the option is the main thing. I right. I got to wake up early tomorrow because I got to do that food truck. But I I I've been sleeping in every Monday for, for God knows how long now. It's it's about time I want to wake up and go and do it. But it's a choice. That's balance. If I don't want to do the food, See, that that that's actually balanced though. That's actually balanced though. Like you do this all the time. Now it's time to get up. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it for some shit that you planned, you scheduled, that's a whole different animal. And as long as it's not on do. the day, if I decide right now, I'm not waking up tomorrow. I don't have to call nobody and cancel with nobody. I just won't go. It don't have totally different with either one of those. That's when you really know. Like on, now, on, conversely, on Saturday, I don't have to go, but I risk losing my job. I definitely have to call that school and tell them that I'm not coming. And they're going to be like, well, why aren't you coming? You got to give a reason. That's a whole nother thing, you know? So yeah, yeah. Just knowing you have the option and knowing you don't have the option is traumatizing. You know what? And just, here's another gem I'm going to give. Um, even when you, if you are in that nine to five, nine to five position, mm-hmm. you should be of a, a person or an, uh, you, your, your, your uh, reputation should be mm. to the point where you, number one, you don't call, call out a lot. Yeah. So I'm already gonna talk about people who who are already taking care of business. Mm. And, and like I was always taking care of business in any jobs or you know, that I've had. And whenever I called out, I was always certain to never ask to call out. Mm-hmm. I would call out and declare. And I would always keep the explanation to a minimum. Mm. Especially when I'm first calling out. Well, why are you calling? It doesn't even matter why I'm calling out. I'm not for you. You need to get off the phone and start making whatever uh, situation. What do you need to change? Whatever you know, what I mean, some some I was doing or whatever. Make reparations. You don't need to know all that about me. The fact is, you need to know I'm not coming. Yeah, the, yeah. The fact I'm not coming, it's all it's all good because number one, I don't do it that often, and I have that power. And that because it's a psychological thing. I'm not asking. I'm telling you, uh-huh. respectfully. You know what I'm saying? But that was all, that. I think that's all part of a trauma too. If you think you're, you have to ask permission to be sick, mm. or ask permission to, you, you know what I'm saying? Permission. Yeah, yeah. Take Shout care of your children. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Threw that out. Yeah. You know, you have to ask permission. 
letting people know is one thing. Letting people, hey, like you and me, we're working together on something. Hey, can't make it, not gonna happen. Letting you know is one thing, but asking permission, that's a whole nother ball game right there. Yeah. When you're young, I'm gonna tell you, like you 20s or whatever, you're just not seeing it because you, right. know, yeah. you ain't, you're trying to follow right now. You're trying to learn so you don't see it. But if you can not miss the tree from the forest or the forest from the trees, wherever it goes, the saying goes, uh, <laughs> we're not good at sayings over here. Yeah, we're gonna start doing that, go ahead. But uh, yeah, uh, know that down the line, the order you get, when you don't have those options, when you feel like you're a grown man and you wanna be able to choose, or a woman, and you, you want to have the ability to choose which way you want to go, you gotta you gotta start cultivating that early. Like Tox said, make I didn't good habits. Know make good habits. Walking by my house before he was walking by my house. I didn't even realize it, but now that I'm older, I definitely see, man, I'm glad I I, I work towards that. Cause uh waking up whenever I want to is a luxury I I'm I i do not think I'll ever be able to lose. And no, this is a special skill you have. I, I, I and maybe this is a generation thing, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just out of touch, but this is something that there are certain things that Sterling just seems to have known in his past from his past life. I don't know where it is that to me, if I wouldn't have experienced, I would even now still be wondering. And that's one of them. The whole nine to five job career thing is one, you know, the religion's another one. Um, there's a there's a couple more. I'm just not. Marriage, that's another one. Yeah. Um, and if I wouldn't have experienced these things, because it's, these are things that you're almost supposed or any normal person experiences. And if I wouldn't have done these things, I would even be like, you know, for me, I had to go live out in the countryside. I had a romantic image of living in the countryside. Not no mo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you almost you know convinced I mean? me. Not, I was like, I ain't Not good. no mo. Not no more. Not saying that there is not something nostalgic or, 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 or beneficial about that. But I mean, if I would even do it again, I know I would do it with some real up to date, uh, city like conveniences yeah. available. Um, like we were talking about, I was talking about earlier about the bug control. Oh my god. Nah. Oh my god. I, I'm, I'm traumatized by insects. I'm still getting over that. Man. Anything that's moving. I tell y'all, he yeah. had a down there in the in the in the, the south of Japan, and you you talking about? I mean, they them bugs walk around like they got rights. Like <laughs> they walk in like they're looking at you like why you in my house? Yeah, yeah. Not even scared of you. You can see the details in the bug's face. That's that's what really bugged me. That not the, no pun intended. Where really they got on my nerves. Like you you know when you see a bug like you it just looks like a bug. Like you see the whole body down there you can see like the eyes like the little personality yeah the mouth, yeah yeah <laughs> oh that spider's irritated oh that's why he, he just chilling like you're like oh i can see it though i can see the details on the face like <laughs> and just to, to fill everybody in and yeah and no one's gonna know i i was a vegetarian a very strict vegetarian at one point my wife and i and we decided we were gonna like go off the off the grid and we bought a house or we rented a house i should say down in um, Kagoshima, which is one of the, the southernmost, you know, Japan is composed of, of, of islands. There's five main islands. Yeah. And Kagoshima is on Kyushu, which is the southernmost island before you get to the Ryukyu Islands, most notably known for, for Okinawa, mm -hmm. the Okinawa chain of islands. And so I lived at the very southern tip of the southernmost main island. And um, I had a I had a sizable area land, um, had a, a, a hatake, uh, a little field, field garden, an orchard, an orchard, orchard, a big, yeah. it's bigger than a bigger than a garden, yeah. an orchard, and we we were growing a lot of lot of vegetables. Um, there was a good side of it, but after about two three years, it, it wore off, and I should have moved. Yeah. And from there, a lot of bullshit, a lot of bad stuff happened. You were chopping um, wood. Ugh. I had a bathhouse. Yeah. Um, separate bathhouse. And it was nice. Like you said, it was nice. Like, it was like a nice getaway. For a minute. For a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I thought I was going to live like that for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? I just really, I just, how, how ridiculous that is now. Um, 
But uh, at that time, these young idealistic, um, and I had just had enough of society. That part I got right. Uh-huh. I had just, I just had it with society, and I was trying to figure out a way to live off of the grid. And um, that wasn't it. <laughs> I can say with 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 with, with surety, with in sincerity. Um, but you know. You know, like I said, anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Like I said, today, I stand triumphant in my battle against the, the insects here in a more developed environment. I'm able to defend them off just learning what I learned there. God, you know? imagine doing this right now back down there. And and the crazy God. thing is, is like how we just, we, uh, you know, Tak and I, we build off of each other because the next logical step, even for me, is get off the grid. There's a lot of young cats, I know, I know at least three cats right now who are talking about moving out to the countryside. Again, Japan is so set up, you actually feel like you can do it. And you can. You need it. It's it, cheap. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. They need to talk to me. Yeah. They need to have a conversation with me before they do it, though. I can, yeah, maybe yeah, I should write a book yeah. about that, too. And, and after watching you do it, I was like, oh, yeah, hell no, I ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it felt like it would have been almost a missed opportunity. Almost like the cats who love going to the clubs out here. Now the clubs is, you know, ever since the Corona thing, clubs is whack, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've never really um, gone one way or the other. I'm, I'm not an extreme person, I guess, when it comes to living out my life, you know? And uh, yeah, it's just a personality thing, you know? Maybe I was traumatized so much in my last life, it was like, uh, or I got over so many things that in this life, uh, I don't have to go through stuff that other people got to go through. Yeah, but, that's what it seems like to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, Whatever uh, reason is, is, is but it it's very, very unique. Journey is over, or none like that. Everybody's got their 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 head start, I guess you could call it. You know, guys that are born very extremely talented. It seems like people like that have to be in the limelight because they just got too many talents to just be sitting at home not showing anybody anything. You know, musicians. That are really or good. or if you get a taste of the limelight at a young age yeah it's hard to go back yeah like if you're famous then you can't just go get a a, a job at ups after that everybody people recognize you right because no matter what you do after that they're going to see you as a failure mm. you know what i'm saying they're going to treat yeah. you as so you fell you fell off like no nah, i'm not i wasn't interested in doing that no more like I heard, um, I watched uh, Nina Simone's documentary. Uh-huh. And after she just got sick of, fed up with the, uh, the US, she moved to Africa. Right. I don't want to say which country in, in Africa first. No, before France though. Oh, okay. She moved somewhere in, in, in the continent of Africa. Um, I forget which country. And she said, yeah, the people were looking at her like, yeah, that was that woman who back in, you know, back in the day did some shit. And, <laughs> and, and they were, and she was like, they were failing to see that. No, I was, I was uh, portraying black liberation right then at that moment. Huh. But everybody missed that. They were like, oh, she was in the news back in the day. Now she over here with us. Oh man, a bunch, bunch of losers, you know what I'm saying? Shout outs to Marcus Garvey when he went back to Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah, he had to, he had to get out of there. They were looking at, they were, I heard the children were throwing rocks at him and shit. You know? And, and just to be even smaller, like I, I remember, uh, like when I was in Dominican Republic, there, you know, Dominican Republic is known for major league baseball players. Uh huh. And there was some dude who didn't 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 make it, and he was back. And you know, now never mind, he's starring in their in their league down there. He's still good enough to play there. Uh-huh. Maybe not starring, but he's still good. And yeah, but they treated him like he was dirt. Oh, man, you know, he at the club by himself, sitting by. I'm talking to him. You know, he was glad to talk to me because he could speak some English to me. Yeah, you know, but uh, wow. I'm he just looking at him. And he's just talking to you. Yeah, yeah. He was a major league baseball player the year before. Got cut. Yeah. Did like played like three years. Three years, man. Three years in the best in the world. But but you but he came back to DR and he ain't had no money. Yeah. You left with all that promise and you come back with to them nothing. Now, when I say nothing, it wasn't like he was homeless. You know, he was buying, he bought me a couple of drinks. 
yeah. I bought him a couple of drinks. You know what I'm saying? It was to me as equal. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm saying? But he looked at his and I'm like, wow, like the pressure. Yeah. The pressure that, you know, you don't even know that's on these people. You think, oh, look, at he, he, in America, he's playing baseball. This is, this is a dream. Yeah, but you don't understand the pressure that's associated with that. Mm. And this all comes back to our, our conversation about trauma, being traumatized. Mm. When you're melanin rich, it comes in so many different ways that, you know, mainstream people couldn't even imagine. Yeah, yeah. You never really went off on that, went out on that ledge anyway. So now you're just sitting back like, see, you should have just stayed in the back like like I did, where you're never really a, you never really stand out. So you're not a winner or a loser. You're just. But in DR, yeah. in a place like that, staying in the back means being poor, perpetually yeah, poor. Yeah, that's the downside to it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Now the fact that he, he went to the States, he and did whatever he did and he came back, he ain't poor no more. Uh-huh. He living amongst his people and he got a, a he has money. Mm. That's a success story to me. Yeah. But he 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 didn't he wasn't successful in the eyes of the major league. He he doesn't have enough money to put anybody on. Mm. They're like, well, we can't do nothing, we can't use you. Once you leave and come back, we gotta be able to use you. Mm. Gotta be able to exploit you to a degree. You know, like the, me, I wanted to live in a, in a foreign country in some of these so-called developing countries because I wanted to be around black people. And I realized after being around them, it's like, no, if you can't put people on, you can't live there. Right, that makes sense. They, they won't let you just, you can't just chill and be normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that, so that in that way, it's not any different than what Japanese people do to foreigners. Mm. That makes sense. With the guy he interviewed, and, and, and uh, of you know, and that's not the only way. But over but here, just, same same thing, you know. Um, right. Just yeah, stay in your lane and thing. be a guest, but don't start going around, start talking about what Japanese should and should not be doing, and how you want to be treated. Like, yo, you you already have a place for you. I heard this nigga just trying to run for office out here. Yeah, there's one out here too. There's a brother out here running for office. Yeah, yeah. He was in Osaka, I think. Yeah. Oh, 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 you're still talking about the same brother? Yeah, I think we're talking about the same person. I heard somebody somebody hit me up and was like, yeah, some, what about that guy that's running for office? And I was like, I don't already know nothing about it. Now I don't know nobody that even does. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is just some guy that just basically said he's running for office. I'm not saying he ain't making his strides. He got to start somewhere. Right, it's going right. to start. I'm not even saying it's supposed to start. I'm just saying if it's, if it's going to start. Yes. You know, like again, I'm not even putting yeah, imposing my opinion on, on that it. yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 We said all that. I think we're we're, we're getting a little bit we're getting out. Of, maybe we should end this. Yeah. Let's but um. Wrap it up. But again, the the trauma thing. Um. The whole it, again, the first half of, of of modern Japan decoded is going to be about black black people getting to know themselves to introduce them to being able to what we were talking about, be on offense. Uh -huh. Knowing yourself is your defense. Mm -hmm. Getting to know yourself is being defense. So that means if somebody comes at you out of pocket, if wow. someone comes at you talking, calling you out your name, you immediately recognize that person no. because why no. your defense is set up. Yes. And then you're able to go on offense because the only way you're gonna be able to, to keep people in their place is being on offense. I'm not, not to be, conflated with telling people off or being rude or being arrogant or anything like that but you're going to have to have some swag mm. to keep the people back <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know what i mean anywhere you go any walk any talk you can be on the offense unless you have a good defense yeah even in your own society if you just monk your own people in many cases Especially, you're gonna to have to be. You're, you're gonna to have to let people know I ain't the one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No matter where you go, and if you think you're gonna to come to Japan and you don't think you have to do that, you're not in touch with reality. Mm -hmm. Modern Japan decoded. We're here to put you in. Like I said, we're we're, we're problem solving. Let's do it. Yeah. Mental health, man. We you got to keep your mental health up, man. Mm -hmm. You know. On that note, yeah. I want to say Afroasiatic.jp. Mm. You get the, the the blogs that I haven't been writing in, but 
um, Modern Japan Decoded is really coming from the compilation of um, of of uh, Nippon Siri. Mm. You know, and then we're going to edit it and, and expand on it. It is. And, uh, and my other one is uh, uh, www hyphen the story or dash the story dot com guy kokujin dash the story dot com and other than that taquan amaru at gmail right on right on and uh right you, real, talk, real talk school real talk english dot jp all day right y'all Shit. all right we'll talk all right you. so we're gonna get at you get yeah. at us and um and we'll get back hell yeah one all right brother peace